Bacteria that can conserve energy and resources have an advantage over bacteria that cannot. An example of such is E. coli. E. coli lives within human colons and depends on the nutrients that its host provides. If the environment lacks tryptophan, then E. coli makes tryptophan itself through a metabolic pathway. If the environment does have tryptophan, then E. coli stops producing it. Regulation of enzyme activity is an example of feedback inhibition. As shown on the left, there are three main enzymes needed for tryptophan synthesis. When tryptophan accumulates, it binds to an enzyme in the pathway inhibited. This way, tryptophan cannot be produced. Another method is regulation of enzyme production. This can be done by inhibiting the expression of the genes that create the enzyme needed for tryptophan synthesis. This is shown on the right. For example, inhibition of TRYP-E and TRYP-D genes will not synthesize enzyme 1. Likewise, inhibiting TRYP-B and TRYP-A genes will not allow enzyme 3 to be produced. About the tryptophan operon. Tryptophan operon is a repressible operon, meaning this operon is usually on. So R polymerase easily binds to the promoter and transcribes its genes. However, the operon can be turned off by uh, repressor proteins when the repressor protein is active. This is because the repressor proteins are bound to the operator and therefore RNA polymerase cannot easily move along and transcribe the genes. Also note that there are regulatory uh, genes called tryptophan R, and tryptophan R is actually a further upstream of this operon and it also has its own promoter. So tryptophan R actually encodes for these uh, proteins and it is also regu regularly expressed, meaning that these proteins are almost always available. So the question is, why isn't this operon always off? Well, the reason is because these repressor proteins, um, they, they bind to the operator reversibly, uh, meaning that these uh, uh, repressors can be turned, can be inactive or active. And this all depends on the co-repressor. So the co-repressor, uh, when it, it binds to the repressor, it makes it active. So in this case, the co-repressor is actually tryptophan. So if tryptophan is not available, then the repressor proteins come off and the RNA polymerase can easily bind to the promoter and transcribe these. The reason that the tryptophan operon is called a repressible, repressible operon is because it is usually on, it can be inhibited or repressed, when tryptophan binds to the repressor protein. This will cause the repressor protein to be activated, so it binds to the operator, therefore blocking transcription. So an example of an inducible operon is the LAC operon. Um, the LAC genes within this operon code for enzymes that break down lactose into glucose and galactose. Now, the LAC operon is the same as the TRIP operon in the the locations of the promoter, the operator, the genes, and the regulatory gene. In addition, the regulatory gene also codes for a repressor protein for this operon. However, one key difference is that the LAC repressor is active by itself. Because of this, the repressor protein can automatically bind to the operator which would prevent transcription of these genes. Now, if the repressor is active by itself, how would it get turned off so that these genes could get transcribed? Well, in the presence of lactose and the absence of glucose, allolactose, which is an isomer of lactose, binds to the repressor and inactivates it so that it can detach from the operator. And therefore, allolactose is called an inducer because it, it deactivates the repressor protein and allows transcription of these genes. So the LAC operon is called an inducible operon because it is usually off, but can be induced or stimulated when allolactose binds to the repressor. The LAC operon is an inducible operon 
This means that the enzymes of the lactose pathway are inducible enzymes, so their synthesis is induced by a chemical, in this case, allolactose. These enzymes are often involved in catabolic pathways, so they break down nutrients to simpler molecules. The tryptophan operon is a repressible operon, so the enzymes for tryptophan synthesis are repressible, meaning that the synthesis of these enzymes is repressed by tryptophan. These enzymes usually participate in anabolic pathways, so they synthesize essential end products from raw materials called precursors. By synthesizing just enough end products to meet its needs, the cell can save its organic precursors and energy for more important processes. Both tryptophan and LAC operons are forms of negative control of genes because the operons are switched off by the active form of a repressor protein.